our star. We're going to go ahead and put this on. It will likely take a couple coats. So with MDF, there is no gr wood grain on this type of wood. Okay, so that means it doesn't really matter if you go this way or this way. Typically when you have wood that you have a wood grain, you have to really make sure that you stay with the grain of the wood. MDF doesn't have that, but what you have to remember is that no matter which way you decide to go, you have to stay going that way, okay? So since I'm going up and down, which is what I would recommend because we're actually gonna do our stripes up and down. So since I'm doing up and down, I do not then want to go across this way, okay? It, you're really gonna be able to see it. And I apologize if my camera is shaking. I may have to set up this a little bit differently when I'm in my garage. I'll be very careful as to not shake the table as best I can. You guys never, I mean, I never know where I'm gonna be live for you guys. It varies all the time. My husband teases me because I have so many spots in my house. I have the garage. I tend to take over the dining room. I tend to take over, well, I have an office. I have a computer office and then I have my craft office, which you guys have probably seen. That's what I do most of my lives in. Okay, so we're gonna do a pretty light coat. You can definitely do the sides. I'm not gonna do the sides for just, well, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Let me put my apron on. Because I am a messy painter, and I actually have a decent shirt and leggings on, so I don't wanna get painted on them. Hold on a second. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and do the edges on this too. I'm not going to worry about getting in the hole of where this goes because it's really going to be covered up with our ribbon and you're not going to see it. So it's not really going to matter that that's not painted. If this was something where you could hang the door hanger, the door tags, and you would see that, then you definitely would want to cover it up, but I'm not going to. Hi, Carrie. All right. I'm going to show you guys July's kit as well. And I, it is posted on the main page. So you guys may have already seen it, but I think I just posted it about an hour or so ago while I was sitting at baseball practice with my youngest. I was like, hey, we'll do nine o'clock because baseball practice gets done by eight and we're 30 minutes away and then they didn't get done till 8 30 so I was really fretting about getting here on time getting back home on time okay so for the star um, you can see I'm going every which way just to get these painted but I'm gonna go back and just make sure it's all one way Let's go ahead and paint the edges of our star. You do definitely want to paint the edges of your star because you're going to see that when it is on your piece. Hi, Lee. Candace said she saw it and she's so excited. So I'm going to show you here in a minute. I'll show you up close and personal some of the things that we'll be doing next month with that kit. Parker, I'm in the garage. Hey Parker. We got the kiddos needing stuff. Parker, what? <laughs> All righty. So I forgot what I was saying. Who knows? All right. I'm gonna show it to you when our wax is drying. And this is actually really good. I'm gonna do just a smaller or a lighter coat, but it's not really gonna to take too much. When you're doing your coats of paint, just make sure they're light coats of paint. The thicker you do it, the more it's probably gonna have a hard time. It, it, like if you have really thick coats of paint, 
you can pull up the undercoats of paint, if that makes sense. So when I'm going over this, I could start pulling up the paint that I have on here. And so you have to be really careful about using really thick coats of paint. Thin, thin multiple coats are always better than um, a thick coat. Parker, I'm in the garage. <laughs> I don't think my son knows where I'm at and I literally have told him. <laughs> it's so funny, I don't think he knows where I'm at. I mean, the kitchen is right on the other side of the garage door. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let that dry. Let's go ahead and set these to the side. Do we need another coat on this one? Maybe a little bit. So originally, I had told you guys, I have my little fancy tool that was from the Dollar Tree that I paint with a lot, and that's how I do some of my distressing techniques, and it was supposed to be in this month's box for everybody, but it's on back order. So the intention is for it to be in next month's box. So hopefully we get that in time. But white is going to dry really fast. Navy is thinner, so it may take a couple coats, and I think I put way too much on here. Again, remember to just go one way with your brush. Whew, I did get too much on here. We're going to have to scrape some of this off. I got way too much on there. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, now we can just spread around what's on there. And then once you have your so this is basically covered and you know, I may paint down here and then I'll paint some up here, but when you're done and you feel good about the coverage, just do one long stroke along it all because that's going to take away any um, paintbrush marks that may come like if you probably can't tell on camera, but when I stop here and come up, you can see where my paintbrush stops. And so just long strokes works best. And I already did that side. Let me make sure my heat gun is heating up and it is. Okay. Hey, I'm live. What's up? This is going to be awkward if I ask you for money on live. <laughs> it's going to be awkward if you ask me for money on live. I mean, I think a lot of these people have children, and I think their children are asking for money all the time. Are you doing going live in the garage now? What is this? I just did it out here. <laughs> Why do you want money? It's a surprise. Huh? It's a surprise. It's a surprise? Yes. So you're giving me a surprise, but I have to pay for it? Do you want to know something? It's not even your surprise. It's not even my surprise. Who's the Listen, surprise I'm just, I'm a little low on money right now, and I spent a lot of money on the Florida trip, and... You're not low on money. I, I just okay, don't I'm want to spend money. money. Yeah, I just don't want to spend it, yes, but... You want to spend mom's money. It's easier. I'll get you, I'll get you something. Oh, it's easier to spend mom's money. I, I mean, that's... This is like true. Shark Tank, so it's like... This is not Shark Tank. What are you trying to get me? This is my to? business proposal. No! <laughs> if you give me... <laughs> you guys are listening to all this. $40 in exchange for one load of laundry, you can get 20% equity in my company, which means I'll give you one thing. <laughs> you, you don't even have a company. Yeah, I do. It, it's like... Just not yet. Yeah. And a load of laundry, that means you're going to do one load of laundry? I'll do one load of laundry. I'll do one round of the entire house. 
I was gonna say one load of laundry is nothing. So. Like one like one like empty the laundry room kind of kind of stuff. Do you know how much I do laundry? Why do you want money? It's a surprise. I can't tell For you. For who? Nobody. It's for Morgan. Oh, it's for Morgan. It's for your girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't transfer money till I'm off because I'm using my phone. Oh my god. So okay, you can use, transfer I'll it just, I'll out just, of your bank. Okay. And then I will. Use a gloss mod podge. Or you can use um, a spray sealer. Let's see. I'm trying to get these right. So we're going to put a stripe here. We're going to put a stripe there. And I don't know how well these are going to. I'm not measuring. I mean, I probably could and I probably should, but. Probably the best, if you want these really crisp lines, the best thing for you to do is to get the frog tape, which is the green tape that they sell in the hardware store. It's called frog tape. And it is about an inch and a half wide. And so it creates almost perfect lines. Okay, so the reason I did it like this, I'm going to do a red line here, a red line here, and a red line here. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, I'm going to put some paint on this. Yes, you can use blue painter's tape too. That works perfectly as well. Okay, so when you're doing this, let's move this out of the way. I just took paint in my brush and with one strip went all the way down, okay? Um, it did not look this fully covered. And so once I had that one strip down, I'll show you on this. Um, then I went back in and filled in and just made it a little bit more, um, more fully covered. So that's how you do that. We are going to fully put these on and then we'll have some crisp lines here. When you're using tape, we want to go this way and not this way across the tape because if we pull this way with our brush it's going to get up underneath and we don't want that so we're just going to go again do the same way that you went with um hold on marcia let me read your comment real quick you're going to do the same way that you did the same brush strokes that you did with your white paint. Oh, you haven't gotten your kit yet, Marsha. It was shipped before your watermelon order and you got that today. Um, so Marsha, when you, um, I can check the tracking on it when, as soon as we're done here. I can definitely do that. And you're going to be able to watch this video again. It's going to be, even though it won't be live, it's going to be saved here in the group. So you're still going to be able to access this. Okay. So once I'm done tonight, you're still going to be able to access this group. Um, I will check your kit. I know another lady got her vinyl that I forgot to put in it, but she hasn't gotten her kit either. So... Cindy. All right, so I will I will check on that for you guys. Let's see. 
So it's completely up to you if you want to do the look that I showed you on the other one or this look where it's a little bit more crisp lines. And I'll show you when we pull this off. I'm going to do another coat right here. Oop, there's some paint gunk. So if you do too many light coats, you got your kit and your vinyl. Good, Cindy. Um, if you do too many light coats, your white or your red can really look like pink. And so if it's doing that, then let it dry completely and then come back and do another coat of red. Because it's just picking up the color underneath and it's tending to make it pink. See, I think you guys can maybe see here that it's looking a little bit pink in some areas, especially right there. I don't know. It's probably it's really shiny. This overhead light is probably not the best idea for our thing tonight. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this off. There you go. You see how I have my crisp lines now? And ladies, I didn't measure these, okay? Here, like I'm gonna do a stripe here and I'm gonna do that, okay? And then I'm gonna go back and fill it in until it's covered the way I want. That looks good to me. So then we're gonna do one here. I'm gonna do the edges first because that's gonna be easier for me to gauge where I want my middle. So I'm just doing really light coat here, okay? On this part, I'm kind of taking my edge of my brush and just making a little bit more of a solid line around the edge. Not perfect, it's not a perfectly straight line. So then here in the middle, we'll do the same thing. See, that's crooked, but we're gonna make sure that it looks all right and we're gonna dress it up. There you go. So there's more distressed lines, which is so you can go all the way around the edges like this. I'll show you both looks. So you're just putting a little bit of paint on your tip of your spoon or your knife or whatever you're using. And you're just going to drag it along the edge here. Okay, then I'm going to just do it. So make all of your strokes go the same way. And each one of these is going to look different. You could make a million of these and they are all going to look different. So there you go. Around the edges, unless you want it to be all in the center as well. So we're just going to very lightly It takes a light hand, okay? We don't want to press super hard. You can always add more, but if you got too much, it's going to be hard to, I mean, it's going to be fixable. You can wipe it off with a baby wipe and make it, you can fix it, but it's easier to add more than take away later. that's it. There we go. Oh, that one got a little much up there, but that's all right. There you go. Super, super cool. Sorry, that's almost out. What I'm going to do is cut those off. We're just going to get as close as we can without, you want to leave a little bit of the ribbon because if you cut too close, to the stitching on the edge, it's gonna break the stitching and your wire can come out a little bit. And some of your wires may have come out during shipment and you can kind of push them back down in there if you want. 
but let's go ahead and cut these. Thank you, Stacy. All right, so there's one. Some of your blue ones have wire on them as well. Mine does not because I have a different ribbon. Is that wire? Yeah, it is. That looks like a really funny stitch on the edge of that, but it is wired. Okay, so we're going to sit those to the side. We are probably going to make this into three pieces. I don't know. That's a little bow. We may make it into two. We'll do two. All right. Throw that one in two. We're going to do this one in two. And we'll do this one in two. You probably do not have a piece of twine in your in your box, so just take a string or anything like that. I mean, you could even use some of this because we probably won't even use all this. So let's do that. How will you guys use everything that you have in your box? I'm going to take one of these, and this is what we're going to tie it together with. So if you guys know anything about the way that I do my ribbons, I work um, backwards. So what we're going to lay down first is what is going to be on the front of our bow. So we're going to go ahead and cut this in half, and we're going to cut these because I want these to be on the front. Let's cut this one into three. Let's cut this one into two pieces. This one into two. And we'll cut these. A little bit of this. I need a drink of water. Okay. See which one of these is longer. I'm gonna use that one for the. Uh, actually, I think they're both the, the same. All right, so we're gonna lay these down first. The ones that we want to do the curly cue with. So we're gonna lay them in. Just remember, this is the one we're gonna tie it all together with. Hear people taking their trash out. That means tomorrow's trash day. And I don't think I'm going to use this one actually. All right, so we're going to do the black and white now. This black and white is kind of hard. So we're going to lay that one there. I tend to bunch them up a little to begin with just because it kind of helps them come together easier when we tie it all together. Okay, so there we have our black ones. Let's do the blue one here. And the blue one here. And then our bed. Working backwards is just easier for me. I don't have to worry about maneuvering this around now and 
um, turning it over and getting all my stuff to lay right. So I'm going to take these two pieces here that I cut off and we're going to tie it together. And there's wire in that, so it should hold pretty good. See? I'm going to tie one more knot. Actually, we're going to bring these around to the front because we can use that for curly cues as well. Okay, so now we can trim these. And I probably will. Let's trim these and make them pointy. So in order to do that, you can fold your ribbon in half just like this. And then you're going to cut from the sides that don't go together, that's your high side, down to your low side. Like that. And that's what creates that. It's called a dovetail. This one's still kind of long. You like my way of making a ribbon. I'm glad you do. I hope it makes it easy for you. Ribbons can be really a pain in the butt sometimes. They really can. And there's a few different ribbons I make, but I typically try to show you guys this one because it's a little bit easier. So now I'm just moving these around to where I can see my the ribbons that I want. And I think that's good. So now we can take a little a pencil or anything like that. I'm going to take my apple pen. Hold on, I have a wire that's coming out. So now we're going to take, I'm not going to bring these around to the front because they're too short to do anything. So the ones I tied it with, I'm just going to clip off. They were too short to do anything on the front. So now all of these, we can curl. You can leave some straight if you want to give some more um, dimension. Let's see what they look like. Let's figure out what we want to do here. There's two more black. All right, so now we're just going to take our pencil and just wrap it around to make a curly cue. Can you guys hear the coyotes? I have the garage, the little door that goes to the back of my the backyard open. My front garage door is not, but my back door is open. And I can hear the coyotes. So I'm just wrapping these around my pencil and twisting. It's your brush here is probably going to be a little bit too big. So you're going to need something that's a little bit smaller, like a pencil. Or the end of a paintbrush, maybe. More, but I think I like leaving some of them long. Let's see. We have two red ones there that are straight, two red ones there, and then we have a black and a black. There we go. I think that's good. There we go. So cute. Every bow is going to look completely different, you guys. It's just, I mean, that's just kind of the way it is. Every bow, all of your curly cues are going to look different. You are never, ever, ever going to get your bows to look the same. You know what I was just thinking? Something else you could do is, look, we could take a little bit of this white and go down the edges of this as well if you wanted. Oh my goodness, is that cool? And it just gives it a little bit. I love it. I 
love this technique though. If you don't, then you definitely don't have to do it. I, I do. I like that. I think I like that a lot. Let's go down the sides in here. Just a tad bit. Oops. There you go. So you have a little bit of a different distressed look. I think my paint has a dry film on top of it. There we go. I think I like that. So you have your paper, and then you have your vinyl lettering, which is cut out, and then you have your sticky transfer paper on top. So what we're trying to do is get our vinyl lettering off of the blue paper onto the sticky transfer paper. So if you rub it, it will start to pull away, or it should. Sometimes it takes a little bit of maneuvering. Nova Lee. Of course, this one's being a booger. So if you just press down, if it wants to come up on your blue paper, you press down again and you can get it to come. You can get it to come off for the most part. Get in there. Come on, this way. Go on. My animals are being very needy tonight. This is why I craft in my room. Okay, that's what you want. So now we're going to put this down here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to press it down. We're going to rub the top of it again with a credit card or something like that. And we're going to do the same thing except my exclamation point is messed up. So I'm going to fix that. There we go. All right, let's get some glue on our star here. We're gonna put it just like that. Ooh, I was shaking my camera there for a second. Sorry about that. Okay. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, so now if you wanna go ahead and kinda of get your circles in a good spot, and then you can, I would glue these together, okay? So we're gonna just put a little bit of glue on this back of this one side here. And then we're going to adhere it just like so, depending on how much. Make sure your bite is dry. Okay, so now it's glued together, okay? Just like that. So now.
You can tie this together in a knot if you want, like this, and glue it, or glue it to the board. It's completely up to you what you do here. Let's go ahead. We're going to tie it in a small knot. That is tying very well. I'm not sure why it came apart. Let's fix that. I'm not sure why that's coming apart. Let's just go ahead and only use two of them. How about that? And there we go. Now, if you want this showing, you can, but we're gonna hide it down in here. And that's what we're gonna put our bow over. And I think I'm actually gonna tack it up here with glue. Put a little bit of glue there. We're going to tack it right there. Let it dry for a second. Do -do 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 -do. All right. And then we're going to put our bow on here and it's going to be done. Oh my goodness, I love it. I'm thinking. This one's a little bit long. Now, if you want to seal this, like I did the other, like I was talking about earlier, I would do that now before you put your bow on. I got some strays here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out where I want my bow. I think I'm gonna do it just like, this red one still looks really long. I'm going to do it just like that. So I have a red piece going down each side of my bow, or each side of my star. There we go. Now, I am using, oh, <laughs> you like the top, you, you missed your, my smiling face. Thank you, Stacey. You know, so I'm getting a new computer. And there's going to be a way that I can do a top view and you can still see my face. So I'm trying to get it all set up. And I will do, I don't do these top views on my main page, so you'll still be able to see my face. <coughs> I only do those when, these when I'm really trying to teach you guys something and I want you to see a little bit closer. I'm letting that glue stick a little bit more. I think it's gonna work. I think that's good. That's still a little bit wet. But, 